Well, welcome to this month's CCI video update, exploring the variety of work that schools around the state of Indiana are completing through the Comprehensive Counseling Initiative from Lilly Endowment. I'm Matt Fleck, and today our guest is Lisa Noble, who's the grade 7 through 12 counselor at Tell City Junior Senior High School way down in southern Indiana. Welcome, Lisa. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. I want to start as we do with most of these discussions about the comprehensive counseling model, I know you chose the ASCA national model and you've been working to put in a submission for RAMP. How, what's your progress? Where are you with that right now? Well, originally our plan was to apply for RAMP at the end of year four. Um, over the summer, um, back in the spring, we, we felt that um, with the pandemic, there were um, pockets of time we lost. And so we wanted to put forth our best application. We didn't feel ready. And um, we had taken on an ask a coach to help us with that process. And so we just wanted to take something off of our plate um, because it was a, a hard deadline. Um, so we've postponed until next year. Um, we're gonna continue to work this year through the grant um, at the end of the fifth year and apply next October now, so. Okay. It's a great idea. Yeah, it does take a lot of work. So I, I commend you on just putting it all together. That's a, that's a huge lift. Right there. Yeah, we wanted to feel like we were putting our best product out there to apply. And we just felt like we needed more time to do that. Certainly. I know you have many goals and strategies. I know that this year you mentioned that one of your, uh, uh, the goal that you thought was going maybe the best was transforming the culture in the building, in the school building and especially focusing on self-care and trauma-informed, trauma-trained, and trauma-responsive staff. Tell us more about that. So that was one of the two of our main goals, along with, with the ASCA, the RAMP model. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel over the course of the last four years, as we reflect on it here at the end of the grant already, um, we talked about what we had in mind from the very beginning was to take a train the trainer approach where, where our staff, our school counselors and social workers, and even having our teachers work with our other our fellow teachers on training them on different trauma-informed practices and strategies. Um, we've done work and learns with our staff um, over lunches. Our administration has been very supportive and has allowed us to commit to four um, staff meetings a year to present trauma-informed. That was something we wrote in the grant um, to do one pretty well each grading period was the thought behind that to deliver services um, to our teachers um, and just provide um, important updates and um, to make sure we're also grabbing new teachers as, as new teachers come in the building each year. Have you, do you have a story about something that is working really well for you or something that um, surprised you in the course of the, the grant initiative? I think through the process, um, we've tried to take a whole school approach. We're a small school. We average about 100 kids a grade level. And so um, we know our kids. We know um, last year's graduates. I could tell you where they're all going and what they're doing. And so with that, we we feel like, um, you know, when you look at data or pockets of data and you might target a, a small group of kids, we feel like we're tracking all of our kids in attendance and grades um, and, and keeping up with them. We've noticed um, about a 7% decrease um, in chronic absenteeism. And I feel like that's been attributed to a whole school approach in where are the kids, why aren't they here? Let's get them in the building. And getting them here solves most of the problem. When you can get them here, they're doing their work. Um, and because we have the wraparound services with our school counselors and social workers, um, in the beginning, we thought attendance grades and behavior would be a big piece of it. And, and I feel like the behavior piece has kind of fallen into place because if they're here and they're doing their work, um, you know, the, the third component of that tends to, tends to work itself out. Um, with the services we're providing once they're in the building. That makes a big difference, yeah. You, you've, commun or you've increased the, the communication connections between you and the social worker and teachers. You've involved teachers more. Can you tell us how you did that and how it's going? We were lucky. One of our partners was United Way. And I know we'll 
talk about partners a little bit later, but they um, granted us about $30,000 um, for training. It was a really nice match with the grant over the course of the last four years. Um, we were able to bring Jim Sporliter here from Washington State. Um, we have gone through his book, Trauma-Informed Schools. Um, and one of the pieces we've taken out of that is really just collecting the data on students. We used it a lot during the pandemic when we were working from home in the beginning on um, making sure the teachers were aware, I think including them in the process of, of um, referrals and, and what maybe the issues were with those students and why they were needing to see us. And, and then even the importance of follow-up, you know, what happened once the student left their classroom and came here um, and who was, who was maybe following up with the student in our office um, and what was the outcome going to be? Because a lot of times they leave and come back and they don't know what maybe has happened in the meantime or even just showing them um, and sharing with them the underlying issues that are going on at home. Um, I feel we have increased that communication immensely and it gives them a better understanding of what is going on with that student so that they're better prepared in the classroom when they see an outburst or a disruption. I think it only helps to have that better communication. So you're right. Good for you. It, it pulls everybody into that discussion on helping the student and that work. Right. Tell us about a community organization or partner that you're working with now and maybe has developed through the grant and how that collaboration is going. I know you have multiple partners. We do. and We're a small community and I think everyone is here to help each other. We've never really hit a roadblock with, with anyone that we've approached. Um, Indiana Youth Institute, we've been doing the Youth Worker Cafes for over 10 years. Joe Schrode is our partner. He's been wonderful. Um, and we've met several great people through that organization along the way. We're now driving the topics. We sit down each summer and plan out what we're going to discuss that's relevant to our community. Um, and so that's something that's important, um, you know, as far as just issues or hot topics that are, that are local um, or more of a regional issue. And so we, we utilize IYI, United Way, I mentioned previously. Um, our systems of care, Perry County Systems of Care, they have developed a subcommittee that is specifically trauma-informed um, to help do more outreach within the community. For example, uh, back in May, we had a mental health walk. And so um, we have noticed an increase in awareness and um, more visual representation, whether it be newspaper, billboards, um, just try to get a broader message out about um, ending the stigma of mental health issues um, and trying to have a more unified approach and helping people get through, um, you know, different struggles they might be having. So system of care has been a great um, area also that has support from lots of different community members and stakeholders. Um, and so those are, those are a few, our Perry County Development Corporation, um, they're the more business sector of things. Um, we work with them with our Perry County College Success Coalition, and it's good to have a pulse on, on the business side. I know they're struggling a lot right now just with work, finding work and uh, workers and making sure um, they're filling their jobs. And so uh, we, we feel like we have a good um, communication, a good, I guess, relationship with, with all different facets of, of the community. Everyone here is very supportive in, in any of the initiatives we do at the school, so. Let me ask you an honest question. Um, was there a, a disappointment or a setback along the way that you faced in putting together your comprehensive counseling initiative or implementing? I, I think we could probably all say that the pandemic has been the setback. I know that's probably an easy answer, um, but it, it just, it, it took us down to bare bones. I feel um, we didn't want to ask teachers and we're still very conscious of not putting more work on teachers right now, not asking them to do any more. We're actually trying to do the opposite, trying to take things off of their plate. Um, we had some different things, we brainstorming, how do we help them? You know, time is something they need. Um, how can we help relieve them so they have some extra time to get work done? So we've tried some different things. Um, here to help support so they have some extra time during their day. Um, um, food always seems to maybe solve a little bit of a problem. So we've been trying to have some different luncheons and different things to bring, bring people together. But the pandemic really took us, I feel, down to just almost a skeleton approach of, of operation on 
where are the kids, let's get them here, um, tracking students online and um, making sure, um, you know, with absences and, and making sure they're showing up and turning their work in was just the, has been the biggest issue to tackle. I guess we're all in it together, but it still doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> yeah, I wish there was a magic button or, or an answer. And I don't know that we ever really had one. Um, we're in person now. We're not, we're not streaming um, unless the student is quarantined, you know, if they're not able to be there physically for that reason. And so I feel things are settled for the most part and, and we're kind of returning to a more normal schedule and routine for everyone, but it's been really hard. Um, there have been a lot of tears this year. There's been a lot of anxiety in students and um, it's been an increase, I feel like, in just the emotional distress that has come from it. Um, that's that's just the excess of what we're seeing, you know, as a result of us going through this. I'm going to wrap up with a question about a book, a resource, a website, something that you've used maybe through this grant or even before. What, do you have a recommendation that you would share with other school counselors? We've, we have really abided by, by ASCA. Um, it's been a great resource for us, the fourth edition books, as we go through the process to apply for RAMP. Um, they've been a great resource because they guide you through the whole process. There are three or four different books you can utilize for that. And then also trauma-informed schools, um, Jim Spoilator, they have their own book um, that has some really good strategies and different things that they've tried. Um, just in tracking kids and and we've kind of adopted that in our in our own we've developed some different tracking systems um, to make sure we're, we're grabbing all of the kids we're, we're making sure those gaps are being um you know looked at and and making sure that all the kids are being addressed so wonderful you're doing good work there i got a chance to review your program for the grants initiative i was looking at it it's great to talk to you to get just a little bit more context behind all the work that you're doing. Keep it up. Um, good luck through COVID and the rest of the school year. And Lisa, thanks for being our guest today. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for joining us for this monthly CCI video update.